Welcome back to Let's Play Sin and Punishment Star Successor. There's Mount Fuji. Looks like they have an entire army guarding it. The place looks like a fortress. You can let us off here, big guy. Thanks. Well, when this whole thing started, I promised you guys hell. And uh, here it is. The bullets will be here soon enough, though, so don't worry about that. Uh, this opening section is very much to lull you into a false sense of security. And starting just about now, the kid gloves are off. So you see those walkers that are walking around in the lava? There's also some of them over there on the shore there, I just blew them up. But the thing is, the shots that are fired, the basic enemy gunfire is pretty much the same color as the lava in this stage. And there is a lot of lava in this stage. Mount Fuji on Earth 4 is an active volcano. And uh, this is problematic, because as the bullets strafe the screen, it's easy to lose where exactly they're landing, and you'll miss out as the bullets track in on you. Now, there's also a medal to be had here. There are nine pillars on floating islands, and if you can destroy all nine of them, then you get a medal. Unfortunately, this is a uh, course of action that's usually reserved for those who wind up in the poor life choices zone, as taking your eyes off of the enemies, off of the bullets, and off of the missiles while you concentrate on destroying the pillars is a recipe for getting yourself killed. This opening part of the, of the stage is... Actually, I personally think it's the hardest part, and I normally end up at the first mid-boss segment with very little health remaining. While the poor life choice zone will disappear soon enough after we uh, pass by the final island and show actually getting the medal, the amount of health that I have as I reach this walker segment is 7, as compared to 55 in the regular run here. Obviously, I did not succeed in getting to the first boss on uh, that other particular run, and that's why I eventually abandoned doing it in the main run. So the goal here is to destroy enough walkers and survive long enough for the boss walker to appear. Dodging straight into a missile does not facilitate that task. Doing it twice uh, leaves me barely better off than I was in the other run. But the boss, who fires off these energy balls that home in on you, has been revealed and destroyed. Now when you destroy the boss, it takes out all of the rest of the walkers as well, so you don't need to worry about getting you know, shot up after killing the mini-boss. Now this next section, you're met with some volcanic activity in addition to a slew of enemies. In general, you want to uh, slice the rocks, much like you did back with the Snapper Keeper in Stage 2, and then destroy those spiny spinny things as they open up. They're a lot like Star Fox enemies from uh, Area 6, I believe. Now, you want to keep a special eye on those gunboats down there. They're going to be a pain in the ass soon enough. In fact, they're going to be a pain in the ass right now. Just some nice little uh, lasers for you to dodge. Now, those manta ray things in the background, I already destroyed one, and there's another one. Uh, I feel a little bad depriving you of some bullet patterns to dodge, but holy crap are those things obnoxious. If you let them live for too long, they let out a uh, pattern of shadow bullets that takes up nearly the entire screen. It's extremely difficult to dodge through. Uh, you have to do a combination of spacing and momentum and regular dodging to get by them, and in general you're not going to succeed. Alright, time for even more mid-boss shenanigans. So there is an actual boss here, but to get to it, first the game ramps you up in terms of the amount of projectiles on screen. Now you can stop a lot of the projectiles from getting there by destroying the guns and soldiers as they appear. Now, <laughs> I've done this level quite a few times. Uh, basically, I only use takes where I succeed in beating the entire level all at once, uh, without dying or continuing. And uh, it 
took a number of tries to get this one down pat. It's extremely difficult. The level's over half an hour long, as you can see from the video time. Uh, that's not... It's not 35 minutes because I had to die and continue or anything like that. The actual stage is 35 minutes long. And only three or four of those minutes are cutscene. So uh, it's a bit of a marathon session. So more and more enemy walkers and soldiers are appearing. You can stop the walkers by destroying their hangar bay up top, which you can see I did. And uh, that gets some of the pressure off your back. There are a few more soldiers to go, and then we'll get to the actual mid-boss part of the ship. First, fuck that crane. The crane doesn't do anything, but you can destroy it to rack up some points and to make yourself feel a little better. Alright, so we've got an army of walkers. Uh, spacing your charge shots properly is very important here as Isa, though as Kachi you can lock onto multiple things and uh, spread your charge shot among them. Now, it's tempting to blow away a bunch of the walkers, since they're putting more projectiles onto the screen, and they clump up so they're easy to hit with a charge shot. But you really need to save those charge shots for the mid-boss pillars, as they send spotlights of death circling across the screen. Each one has to be destroyed twice. The enemies are smart enough to keep a backup for them, but not so much a backup of the backup. All in all, with enough dodging and realization that the spotlights go in a very circular pattern, almost regardless of where you are, it's actually not that difficult in terms of mini-bosses. But it's a good practice run for what's to come. Before we get there, though, there's a lot more walkers to be destroyed. and another crane. You know, it almost looks like that crane had a boxing ring on top of it. That should be a new level in Smash. Boxing ring on a ship in the middle of bullet hell. And again, if people complain about the Yellow Devil, there's no way that a bunch of bullets on screen all the time is going to go over well. Other side of the ship, same as the first. It's got black hole guns, though I'm doing a pretty good job of getting rid of them uh, beforehand, unlike the first side of the ship. Another walker bay you can destroy. And other than that, just some soldiers. New to this side is more machine guns. They'll strafe across the screen in a fairly regular pattern, so they're not that difficult to avoid. And if you're low on health, which you probably are, you can blow up this front compartment and pick up some health. These guns are far less threatening than the spotlights were before. Not only do they not have enemy backup, they don't have backup to themselves. So, and they're close enough together that a charge shot can take out two at once. All right. Getting a little fidgety here, but it's time for a boss, and I'm just going to let this one speak for itself.
The key is to keep dodging around in a clockwise manner on the outside of the screen. Uh, the bar in the middle was in fact incredibly harmful, so you have to keep moving or you will get hit by it. And you also have to keep moving because there's energy balls everywhere. Doing so in a clockwise manner, like you saw there, is the most effective way to do of doing it, and in general, there's a safe spot on the screen that you can follow around. I did not quite succeed at it as much this time compared to other runs, uh, but the difference is that I actually beat the stage on this run, so that's the one that, that uh, made it to print. So we see some crabs with portable prisons on their back. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm pretty sure Dante Alighieri would be fine with it. Free metal, if you can get to it, where it appears in that line of metals is uh, random. It's different from thing to thing. So you try to stay in the middle to be close to it, and it generally doesn't work. So while this level is incredibly difficult overall and really obnoxious in places, it's also really cool as well. And what we're about to come up on is probably the most sublimely ridiculous and enjoyable part of the entire stage. And possibly the game. I really like this part. So as you can see, there's a tank that's running away from a dinosaur buffalo ram thing. Kinda sucks to be them. So let's go ahead and uh, help out the dinosaur ram things, because clearly they're our friends. Or were our friends until the tank just parked and blew them away. But the real exciting part is this. It's time for Dinosaur Baseball! That's right. As these dinosaur ram things pitch themselves at you, you can bat them back into each other, into the floating buzzsaw platform things, into just about anything you want. It is completely absurd, this section's not difficult at all, but it is hilarious and also awesome. I would love to hear Vin Scully commentate over this. Home Run Derby with Dinosaurs. It doesn't get any better than this, but it does get way more anime as we keep going. And with that, our brief respite is over. Time for more bullets. This time around, we've got some fire pillars worked into the mix. Theoretically, they appear wherever those rocks are dropped into the lava, but it's not always entirely consistent. And it seems that I've almost racked up a time 16 multiplier. That's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm going to squander it very quickly, because once we get to 500 kills, there's going to be a medal to pick up. And of course I'm going to ram straight into a pillar to get it. Now these flying jetpack guys are dangerous because they're carrying black hole guns. So you really want to get them off the screen as fast as you can. Fortunately, they tend to clump together towards the center of the stage, so if you have a charge shot ready, you can take them all out at once. And now, it is time for another very cool segment of the level. I don't think it's as cool as Dinosaur Baseball, but it does involve dinosaurs and also hitting things at dinosaurs. So there's that. I'm willing to bet this train will take us to the heart of the base. What the heck is that? This guy's tough. Our shots bounce right off it. Okay then, let's see how he likes this!
This is what we call story and gameplay integration. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, if you are off of the train for, I believe it's a five count, like five seconds, then you game over automatically. That's kind of bullshit. That said, you fight this boss by hitting train cars back at him, much like they did in the cutscene. Your regular shots don't harm him at all. And that's pretty awesome. He's chasing you, so to see where he is, you have to check in the rearview mirror up above. Now, he's going to dodge to the left and the right, as are you. And also, you're going to need to dodge lots of bullets and dogs that drop bombs. You can hit those bombs that the dogs drop back at the soldiers on those platforms. And that's the goal here. You need to take out all three soldiers on the platforms to get to the next stage of the fight. As you can see, a charge shot only does 30. So basically, this guy takes one-fifth of the damage from stuff. So to do one point of damage, you have to hit it for five seconds worth of damage. Or five shots worth of damage. Alright. So the rearview mirror moves around to tell us where exactly on the tracks the boss is. To hit him, he has to be lined up directly on top of us when we hit a train car back at him. He can't really jump into train cars, which is kind of annoying. The hitbox on it's a little strange. He has to jump before the train car gets there. Sometimes it can be hard to predict his movements. That or he's just really good at dodging stuff. Not so much there, though. He walked straight into that one. I sometimes wonder if you can actually beat this boss in one pass. And, as you can see, even though it looks like the train car hit him, it actually didn't. He has to be right behind it. Oh, and if you notice, he's also throwing fireballs at you while you're at it. It's very neat fighting something that you can't look back at. I use my charge shot there to create a safe zone that can let me roll into where the bomb is dropped and hit it back immediately. Of course, I wind up not needing to do that, but that was the plan. Like I said before... Oh, as you can see there, I was off the train, so a little countdown timer appeared. Definitely don't let that get to zero. That's what kills you. Yeah, I've never seen anybody actually beat this in one go, but it's actually fairly easy to get it done in two. Just need one more, and this should do it. Excellent. Gotcha. bad for the little guy. The moral of the story is don't feel bad for this guy. He's a total asshole, and this part is pretty annoying. So what you have to do is raise this platform up to the top of the tower before the lava gets to Kachi. The lava is always rising, and the keeper is trying to lower her down into it with his little fishing rod crane thing there. By hitting him, you can force him to raise the crane to uh, raise the crane up a bit, and if you hit him enough, 
He'll drop health and eventually a medal. But the real key there is to ignore him completely and just keep hitting the gears on the sides. Basically everything here is to distract you and maybe get a little bit of chip damage on you. The real thing you need to do is just never stop raising those cranes. Also, the hit detection on Lava is extremely strange. You basically lose quite a long time before it actually hits Kachi. But, uh, I don't think anybody at Treasure thought that it mattered enough to fix. Of course, that could be just that they're all so good at the game that it never got to that point. Unfortunately, being bathed in lava does not kill the creature, it simply makes it grow. And so we fight the Hatchling Keeper. This is interesting because it's done in a side-scrolling plane. Didn't quite get the dodge down there, but uh, if you're wondering what the bullet patterns from those stingrays at the top of the stage looked like, it's kind of like that. Whenever a rock comes at you, make sure to deflect it. And keep in mind that you can also deflect him as well. Though you have to be a bit less spastic about it than uh, I was there. What I should have done was strike once, and then strike again when he comes back. This is the much easier to dodge version of the attack. All you have to do is stay away. Not that difficult. Two ways to dodge the lightning bolts. You can either follow along in a safe spot, or dodge left through it to get from one safe zone to another. Now since it is kind of a puppy, uh, one of its attacks is to crap on people. But because it's a terrible alien monster, uh, its crap is explosive. And you can knock it back into it to get some damage in it. RNG loves me on that one. That was a pretty easy pattern to dodge. just very tanky. I can't believe I just kind of blew that one. I think this is the point during the run when it's finally dawning on me, hey, you know, I'm actually going to make it. Or at least really hoping that I was going to make it. Because that is going to put us on the road to the final set of confrontations. Oh, don't think we're done with bosses yet. There's actually three more. But the actual amount of stage left is very small. I like the bungee troopers there, and I feel bad that I missed the medal. It's a lot like the one from the beginning of the stage uh, that just appears somewhere along the line of other medals. I like to imagine those guys uh, just rappelling around the entire base with their little hooks and bungee cords. It's like, uh, oh, what is it? Don't bother trying to take out the boat here, it'll just be replaced by another. Instead, concentrate on dodging the lasers and destroying 
the little shrimp things that come out of the lava. Uh, doing that, well, if you destroy all of them, I believe you get a medal. But the most important thing is that they drop health. As you can see, destroying one boat just results in another boat that was hiding directly behind it the entire time, appearing and taking its place. And now, the end. What is this thing? It's been too long, Isa. I haven't seen you since basic training, when we were on the same side. Deco. So you're after Kaji too? Hmm, we've got a few minutes to kill. Let's see if you're as tough as I remember. Ready for bullets? I sure am. So, it's very important to take out those walkers in the background. Like, not even joking. Between them and... it's just... This fight is absolute sensory overload. Even just watching it back, it's hard to think of where exactly to begin. So there's a constant stream of soldiers that are always shooting at you. Deco is immune to your regular shots. He can only be hit by charge shots and missiles that are fired back at him. He'll also fire some bazooka projectiles at some point that you can, you know, smack back at him. There's also these lasers. Uh, they go ahead and divide the screen up so that you can't hide. The walkers continuously respawn as you rotate around. So there's that too. The soldiers eventually start coming to the foreground as well, and if you, after the uh, second pass, there start to be electrical barriers coming in from the left as well, and they combine with these lasers to make it very difficult to move around. And did I mention that the medal for this fight is achieved by not taking any damage at all during it? Obviously that's not happening. Much like many of the medals in this stage, they're just not happening. Alright, so Deco's finally going to get off his ass and attack. He's got more bullets. The cue for the bazooka is him grunting like a DBZ character. When you hear that grunt, you know it's time to get ready to strike back. And uh, fortunately I defeated him before the electric barriers got into play. Alright, stage two, he's got a shadow dragon and a minefield. Uh, where he was hiding the minefield, I don't know. But Deco takes a much more active part in this battle. Constantly sending the dragon after us, and firing away. To beat him, you need to knock back his bazooka blast, and also keep an eye out for the purple mines in the minefield. One strike to the purple mine closes it and arms it, and the second strike knocks it back. Purple Mines are the only ones that can be knocked back. Deco will try to take away space by sending the Shadow Dragon to encircle you, but you can dodge out of it. Overall, I personally think this form is way easier than the first one. My strategy here is basically just to blitz him. The longer these fights go, the less of a chance you have to win. Because we've already been playing for over 25 minutes now. In fact, it's been just about half an hour exactly before the final fight. In good form. I see how you got this far. Ah, huh. but unfortunately, your time's up. Get 
Kick him! Shut it off now! <laughs> Come out to play, monster. Oh no. shirt's off, so it's time for the final fight for Metal Gear Solid. This guy's basically just Liquid Snake anyways. And so it's uh, time for the Tekken part of the game. You get a medal here for racking up a 7-hit combo, which I don't think I succeed in. And the key is basically all, almost all of his moves have some sort of tell to them. If he goes high, you go low. If he goes low, you try to jump over it, etc. And if he gives you the flying knee to the face, I think you're supposed to dodge backwards. Uh, but I haven't really uh, managed to avoid that one. Sometimes you can do a cross counter to his punch. And knock him up into the air. Uh, to get the combo, you do want to knock him up into the air, and then pummel him down onto the ground a couple of times. I'm just really bad at avoiding that knee. Also the uppercut. Yeah, if you fire back at the moment his uh, K-Maker punch reaches you, I'm pretty sure that's how you trigger the counter. And that'll do it for Deco. And I will please sit back, relax, and enjoy the craziness. Kachi! 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 She won't be human for much longer. What then, Isa? What happens after that... thing? slithers out of that body. Come see me when you've come to your senses. I'll be waiting.
next time. Well, you know what's next.